Hey everyone, Varun Mahotra here. Uh, today I'm doing a breakdown of Andy Murasaki and Lucas Bratazio at the 2019 Rio Grand Slam. Um, so, before we watch the match and actually break it down, we got to understand what the goals of these athletes are. Okay, um, so Lucas Bratazio, he's, um, he's a top player and he's very game. He isn't necessarily the most technical out of everyone in the division, but he's really scrappy and he likes to create scrambles and that's when he generally passes. Uh, Andy Murasaki is more technical out of the two of them. Uh, he likes to play on bottom, a lot of Delaheva with the underhook, and he ha and he also plays at the pant grip a lot. He likes to do a lot of bolos, and he has really good bolo finishes, but a lot of the time he struggles with the entries unless they're really given to him, as you'll also see in this match. Um, it's important to uh, understand their aims at the start of the match. So, Lucas Protasio is looking to time a takedown and kind of steal the two, and um, or he can double pull and come for the advantage and stay on top. Murasaki is simply looking just to get the, uh, just to get the clean pull. He isn't necessarily looking to take down or anything. He's just looking to get to guard without any points being scored on him, so he can get to his game. Okay, so let's watch the start of the match now. Okay, so they're both very tense and focused in this moment. They both know what they want to do. Okay, so Murasaki wants the clean pull. Bratazio wants to score. Okay, so over here you're going to see Bratazio take a shot right now, right there. Okay, so the mistake that he made over there is that um when he went for it, similar to boxing, he didn't really faint into it and made a reaction. Uh, in the stand-up realm of any combat sport, you never really want to try to uh, go for the go for your movement or your goal on the first phase, okay? And that uh, and that means to uh, to go for your attack straight away, okay, without setting it up. It's much better to go for the uh, for the first attack short and then go for the actual movement off the counter, okay? So over here, we're going to take a look of Mayweather and Lomachenko, okay? And we're going to see them punching short, getting the reaction and then attacking uh, and then attacking and landing again after they baited the reaction because they figured out the timing. So over here we have a clip of Lomachenko applying the concept that we're talking about. Okay, so you can see over here he's gonna he's gonna faint on the first phase, the guy count uh, the guy tries to punch back and then he hits him again. Uh like four seconds later the dude falls down from that body shot. Here are a few more examples of this concept. So with this concept of um of it going in on the se uh, on the second phase, um, one thing that happens a lot frequently, okay, and this also happens in jiu jitsu a little bit, is that um the guys uh, the opponent will often just freeze up, okay, and they won't actually do anything back to you. So and then you can just go on the first phase in that situation because they're not doing anything back, and um. This has personally happened to me in a few of my matches where I've gotten a clean guard pull, and um, it's just, here's just, uh, two examples from Longchenko versus Rigendale that it happened. Now let's resume to the match. So now we're going to look at that sequence a little bit where Protasio grabs at Murasaki's shoulders and goes for those two kind of shitty foot sweeps and uh, sits down a little bit to his butt for a moment. So let's take a little look at what happened in that sequence. So uh, Protasio went for those two foot sweeps after um, after attempting a, a takedown, okay? What happened, what he was trying to do there is that generally after you fail a shot, guys are going to try and pull guard on you after you try and re-engage. So what Murasaki did really, really well is that he wasn't in a hurry and stayed patient and just kind of backed away from him while he went for those, uh, while he went for those foot sweeps. So that way he doesn't get, uh, he doesn't get any points scored on him. So over here, we see Protasio sit down for his, uh, to his butt for a little bit, but doesn't actually pull guard. Now, it doesn't really make sense for him to do that since he's a top player, but uh, so we can only hypothesize what his strategy was. Okay, What I think it is, it's either one, he's waiting for Murasaki to go for a foot sweep so he can grab the ankle and go for a takedown, 
or he's waiting for Murasaki to pull so he can sit down at the same time and come on top for the advantage. Murasaki does the right thing and doesn't take the bait, and Protasio stands back up again. So let's take a look at this exchange. So Protasio stood back up, okay, and you see Andy go for an ankle pick there, which is really, really interesting. What I think it is, is that because he was backing up the whole time, is that he was trying to show to the ref that he was being active so he didn't cop a penalty. So then, after he goes for the ankle pick, Protasio tries to come back with his own, and he's just, a ge he generally likes to do that. Whenever someone has, like, an at whenever someone attacks, you generally want to attack right back. And, um... Uh, and Andy times it really well. He gets he gets away from the ankle pick and does a really nice pull where he ends up with both of his feet past the hips. Okay, what this what this means when it has the feet past the hips is that they that the person on top can't do any kind of explosive toriando where they can go for uh, for a pass and get a quick advantage or even the three points right away. Okay, so over here at this stage, Protasio has really fucked up. He just gifted Murasaki a really, really strong Delaheva as he has his knee dropped to the floor and he has his Delaheva knee turned in, which is a really, really bad spot. Okay, um, what he should be trying to do is trying to stay on both feet, posturing up, pushing down the Delaheva hook, disengaging the Delaheva by shin slicing over it or by stepping over the foot, and he also has to deal with the lasso. So with that, he could same side knee side over the Delaheva, or he could rip the grip away or circle his hand. So now we're going to take a look at Paulo Miao and Leandro Lo to see how they kind of deal with this situation. Um, these matches are going to be Paulo Miao vs Gianni Grippo 2018 World Pro and Leandro Lo vs Tanner Rice at, um, the, at 2017 Euros. And we're going to kind of see how they deal with this particular situation when someone has a sleeve grip and a deli heaver. And, um, and we're going to compare it to Protasio's and we're going to see why there's at least what I, uh, why I consider it better than what Protasio is doing in that moment. So now we're going to take a look at the at their stances and see what's different in these situations and why one in particular is better than the other. Okay, so over here, if we take a look at Paul Mio, you see that he's turning his right shin out really a lot. He's not giving Gianni Grippo a Delaheva hook at all, whereas Protasio is kind of turning his knee in and giving Andy a really, really strong Delaheva, which can let him get the angle uh, very, very easily. Okay. The other thing that you see is that uh, Polo doesn't have his knee on the floor. Okay, he always has he has his uh, he has his knee st he has his foot on the ground and he stood up. He has posture so that it's not as easy for his opponent to control his upper body, and um and also it uh, it denies them from getting the Delaheva hook as well. Another thing is that Polo doesn't let um uh, he doesn't let Gianni settle on a sleeve grip, whereas um whereas Protasio. Uh, Protasio lets Andy settle on his sleeve quite, e quite easily, and there's actually a little bit. If you go a little bit further backwards, you can see that uh, that Andy, uh, that Protasio actually has a collar grip on Andy, which is super bad in that situation, and um, he's putting himself in a lasso when it doesn't need to be there. So they reset, and um, so Andy has got a a, a, a lasso and a deli heaver with a pant grip. And uh, Protasio has got an interesting cross grip on uh, on Andy's left leg, which I've never really seen before, as that hand, as we saw before, is normally addressing the De La Hiva leg. And um, let's see what happens from here. So over here, we have a really weird situation. And um, from here, we're going to see what, uh, what Protasio's kind of goal is. He actually does some really smart game planning. 
But over here, he's kind of giving Andy a really easy Barambolo attack. And um, Andy, in this moment, should overhook, uh, should overhook Protasio's leg by having his hand, uh, his, uh, his index finger coming up to the patella of Protasio's leg and his elbow covering the heel, as I'll show you in this Mikey Muzumichi clip. And, um, and that should be easy to enter the bolo. But you'll see over here, uh, Protasio actually comes up into a really, really nice leg drag, or cr like, like a cross-grip leg drag with a collar, which is super, super interesting. So now he's gone for the leg drag, and now we're going to see a little bit of a scramble where um Andy does some uh, has some really nice guard retention, and it shows you how you can use different kind of frames and um and how you can use them to get back to a guard, which is a really really valuable skill, uh, especially a high level jujitsu. So over here, this is a very very interesting position and kind of sequence that you don't see in jujitsu very much. So over here we got Andy. He stops the the cross grip pass or the cross grip leg drag with a pant grip that he's still holding. He's being really really stubborn with that, and he's using that to stop the momentum of Protasio coming to his left side. Um, and he uses his top foot as a frame because if he didn't have that, then he would be in a pretty bad spot right now. And I think he would have gotten past, but he's obviously a high level competitor, so he knows he has to keep that foot in place. And um. What's different over here when he keeps that pant grip is that most people are trying to break Protasio's collar grip and come for a cross grip frame of their own, which is uh, which is the normal thing what you're taught. But over here, he just keeps that pant grip and throws in the lasso, which is super super cool. And um, I'm sure that's just something that was super interesting to me. So we see over here they've reset into Delahiva. And uh, and uh, Protasio is still making the same mistakes as before, and he's giving the overhook even more now, which is re really weird. And um, it would be super Andy to start uh, in this position to start attacking like a pretty generic bolo, and the match would pretty much be over then, as most of the time, whenever he does get to a, bo a bolo position on Protasio, he gets the back like at Europeans this year. So instead of going for the bolo, Andy does something really, really interesting, and it was really, really smart on his part as well. Since um he likes to keep that pant grip, which is like kind of like a very kind of atosy thing to do. It's um it's not good or bad. It's just based on preference. Um so over here he um he realized he he got uh he didn't have success with the outside bolo with the pant grip. So now he starts switching to a, a putting himself in headquarters and trying to off balance Protasio, kind of like Conor DeAngelis does when he does that come up sweep that he's known for. And um he makes an interesting adjustment where he steps on the leg and uh, he comes up for the sweep and he controls that bottom arm of Protasio as Protasio tries to control his, and it's a really cool exchange because you see that little micro-adjustment in that moment and where uh, Murasaki is able to score points. So over here, Andy does something really smart when, once he gets the sweeps. Compared to what uh, Protasio was doing earlier, he's leading with his head instead of his legs, which is really good for not getting swept, because in order to be swept, your opponent needs to be able to control your lower body. And so if you put your head forward and you force them to play upper body guards, then it's really, really hard for them to sweep you. Uh, Protasio over here does a good job of shooting the reverse Delahiva and breaking the color grip that Andy has, is that what makes the position work? Um, he immediately takes the initiative and starts spinning under for an inside bolo, and um, at the same time, Protasio, uh, I mean Murasaki, does a good job of controlling uh, Protasio's top leg and not letting him attach his foot, not letting Protasio attach his foot to Andy's hip. And um, they end up in a weird, scrambly, deep half kind of situation, as um, as you can somewhat expect from someone who, like Protasio, thrives in scrambles. And uh, Protasio tries to get on top. Uh, Murasaki was super aware in that moment. And um, he noticed that Protasio uh, had his elbows disconnected from his body and shot, uh, shot a really, really nice omoplata. In that moment, it is understood that Andy has won the match. Like, no matter what happens, he's won the match. Like, um, if he gets a submission, then that's pretty lit. 
if Protasio escape, he's on bottom, up an advantage, and it's really, really unlikely that Protasio is going to pass his guard. And if Protasio does get another advantage, he's going uh, and he's going to win the ref decision because he's been more aggressive the entire match. So Protasio does what Protasio does and gets out by scrambling. And uh, uh, Murasaki was really good in that moment because um he stood up when Protasio just got out and was about to go to Neon Belly, which would have been advantage worthy. And um it was really smart for Eddie to stand up because he knows he can beat Protasio in the guard pulling game. And um. But Protasio does something really smart, and he stays down when Andy stands up. But uh, for some reason, he gets up again. For my logic, um, I assume that he does. Uh, uh, I see. I think it's a better move to stay in guard because then you also have the opportunity to take the back, which is much harder in stand up. Um, but uh, I think he's just um, Protasio is of uh, me hypothesizing this. I think that he was thinking that he could steal the two in the stand-up, or he just feels simply uncomfortable playing guard. Okay, so when they reset, Andy is in a super good position. There's 2 minute 40 uh, on the clock, and even if Protasio scores 2 points, he, uh, Andy is still up, and uh, Protasio is not going to pass his guard in that time. Um, uh, uh, Protasio comes towards Andy and is super aggressive as he knows he needs to score quickly. And uh, Murasaki is just wasting the clock. He's uh, he's just standing up straight and not letting uh, not letting Protasio get anything off. And when and when they fall down to the ground, he doesn't really care uh, that he got taken down because he's locked in close guard, which can waste the clock even further. So, as Protasio stands up in Andy's closed guard, Andy makes a smart decision to switch to underhook Delahivo, which allows him to uh, to slow down uh, Protasio, who's a movement passer, and the guard is designed for exactly that, and it's really hard to disengage. What Protasio does now, he starts trying to set up his crab ride, uh, and kind of flipping the, squ uh, the script a little, as, um, as, uh, as Andy is usually the one who goes for the Barambolo style of positions. But he does that crab ride kind of out of desperation, and uh, he doesn't really, he's not able to finish it very well. But Andy does a really good job of countering him by trapping the knee and attacking a toe hold, which uh, makes them end up in 50 50 a lot of the time. And as we saw earlier, whenever their match is going to 50 50, a Andy is going to win that battle. So it was a really smart decision on his part. So when uh, Lucas is in top 50-50, this is a really bad position. It's super, super hard to get out of there, and Andy is just slowing down the game really, really easily. Um, in that moment, Andy, uh, Andy is kind of stacked with a drawstring grip, as he knows that Protasio is going to want to die for that crab ride again. And you can see Protasio actively trying to go for it. And um to try and get the to try and get the passing points. The only problem uh, the only problem, as I said earlier, is Murasaki holding the uh, the drawstring, which makes it difficult. So as Protasio falls down for a crab ride attack, Andy uh, comes up for a sweep, but then immediately falls back down and makes his hips heavy because he sees that Protasio is actually becoming successful with that crab ride attack. So he pulls him into 50-50 again, and is planning to hold on for the next 50 seconds in the match, but still being active enough so that he can't receive any penalties. So Protasio went on top in 50-50 right now, is kind of spazzing out and not giving so much uh, like such good reactions out of desperations. And Andy is kind of capitalizing in the moment and almost catches his back like the other times that they've ended up in 50-50. What uh Protasio in that moment does what he does best and kind of scrambles out of the back take and is now free from the 50-50 and wants to start chaining passes together and diving for the crab ride again. He gets kind of close to finishing the crab ride, but Murasaki pulls him into 50-50 again and runs out the clock for the last 10 seconds. So yeah, that's the match. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know what I could work on editing-wise, what you think. Uh, let me know what you think technically in the comments. Um, give me suggestions for matches. Uh, anything really, I'll really appreciate it. Uh, like, subscribe. On, uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to. I post a lot of shit and talk a lot of shit on there. Um, you can see me trolling various people and see somewhat a different side of my personality apart from a little nerd. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Let it be all chill. See you later.